It's an established fact that the sum function is Excel's most used function. At its simplest, it just adds numbers together. And no matter what you use Excel for, sooner or later, everybody just wants to add some numbers. But the sum function has a serious weakness. Take this sum function for example. I have a data set, and if I edit this formula, I can see that the range being selected by sum is C5 through C14. This gives me the result of 44,000 and change. But here is sum's weakness. If I were to go in here and highlight most of the rows in this table, the result is unchanged because sum is stupid. Now, when I say stupid, I don't mean really stupid. What I mean is it doesn't discriminate between visible or hidden rows. Other functions share the same characteristic, average, max, min, count. They don't discriminate between hidden and visible rows. So how do we overcome this? Well, let's unhide those rows. In 2003, Excel introduced a new kind of function called the subtotal function. Now, the subtotal function is like a Swiss army knife. It actually holds a variety of smaller functions within it. And you make a call to one of those sub functions via a code number. And we'll look at those codes in just a second. But just to show you the behavioral advantage, if I edit the subtotal function, it's looking at this range of data. And as before, the answer is 44,000 and change. But like before, if I were to go in here and hide a series of rows, the result has adjusted because the subtotal function does discriminate between visible and hidden. In this example, it's programmed to ignore the hidden rows. Now, if you needed to include those hidden rows, subtotal can do that for you. But my guess is most people would want to use it in this mode. Now, subtotal is great for that particular feature, but one of the things it's not so good at doing is dealing with errors. Suppose we were to introduce some sort of error into the data. Let's say something simple like a pound NA error. Well, the subtotal function will then incorporate that error into its logic and it will result in an error. So we gained one benefit but failed to overcome another. So in 2010, Excel introduced the aggregate function. Think of the aggregate function as an improvement to the subtotal function. So it also is like a Swiss army knife where inside are a set of sub functions. But not only can you declare the desired function, but also a variety of different behaviors for dealing with things like blank rows or error messages. Now, just to finish this example, if I were to go in here and highlight a series of rows, right-click hide, the aggregate function will account for that. If I were to go in and put something like a pound NA error, the aggregate function will also account for that. And all these behaviors are customizable. So really, if you're new to the subtotal and aggregate functions, you might as well just use the aggregate function because it's got more flexibility. But just recognize similar behaviors in the subtotal function if you're working with legacy files. When it comes to the codes for the subtotal function, there are two sets of codes for each function, depending on whether you want that function to include the hidden rows or ignore the hidden rows. So the functions are either 1 through 11 or 101 through 111. So if you use the sum function a lot, it's either going to be 9 or 109. So really, if you just memorize that if you want to ignore the hidden, add 100 to the value. So as I said, subtotal is like a Swiss Army knife where each blade is a different function. Another advantage to the subtotal that I didn't mention earlier was its ability to ignore other subtotal functions. So looking at each of these total and average cells, each of these is using a subtotal function. But to calculate the total, we use code 109. To calculate the average, we use code 101. But let's say you wanted to get the grand total or the grand average. Notice my formula is adding up the entire column C just as a cheat to make it easy for expansion. But I don't want to include the embedded totals and averages for each of those regions. So the subtotal is smart enough to ignore any other subtotal functions. So if I were to manually highlight just the data, we see at the bottom the sum is 9,423. We also see that the average is 589. So although these two functions are looking at the entire column C, they're ignoring the other embedded subtotals. But as before, what happens if we were to introduce something like a pound NA function into our data set? All the subtotals and chained subtotals would fail. This brings us to the aggregate function. Like the subtotal function, I'm a Swiss Army knife with a variety of small blades, each blade being another sub function. But performing something as simple as a sum or an average, for sums I'll use a code 9, for averages I'll use a code 1. But notice this second argument, this 3, this is for the behavior, we'll look at those in just a second. Now I've already demonstrated that aggregate will take into account hidden or visible based on the behavior you choose. 
This grand sum and grand average where I'm using the aggregate function are looking at the entire column C. But what happens if I introduce something like a pound NA error into my data? My aggregates at the north do not fail, and my aggregates at the grand total and grand average level also do not fail, because the aggregate can be told to ignore errors. In 2010, when aggregate was introduced, its list of subfunctions was expanded. Also, the behaviors were introduced. Now, there were behaviors in subtotal, but it was based on the code number you picked. So if you pick the low order numbers, it was to include the hidden rows. If you pick the high order number, it was to ignore the hidden rows. Well, let's separate that behavior from the code and expand on it. Now we only have to have one list of numbers for the functions, and that's one through 19. And you can see after the variance by population, they introduced eight more functions. Also notice that the deviation and variance functions from subtotal, those are using the older deprecated versions of those functions, whereas aggregate is using the more advanced versions of those functions. They do the same thing, but they do it more precisely because the algorithms have changed. We also get this list of behaviors. So if you were using nine for sum and you wanted it to work like a normal sum function, your behavior would be four to ignore nothing. Take into account blank rows, take into account error messages, take into account other aggregations, but you could ignore the hidden rows with a five or you could ignore the errors with a six. Seven would ignore the hidden rows and the errors, but four, five, six, and seven will still take into account nested or embedded aggregate functions or subtotal functions. So this is where zero through three come into play. So zero will ignore nested subtotal or aggregate functions, but it would still take into account things like hidden rows and errors. One will ignore nested aggregations plus hidden rows, two will ignore nested aggregations plus errors, and three ignores everything, nested aggregations, errors, and hidden rows. In my experience, three tends to be the most used behavior, because think about it, in most every other version, you might as well just do something else. Here is a sample data set of sales called My Sales, and there are 100 sales in this list. What you see in this blue table is each of the 19 functions from aggregate being used against this My Sales data. So we've got the function number, the name of that function, the result of that function when exercised on the My Sales data, and then I have some notes here to indicate exactly what that function is doing because some of these functions have some additional arguments like large, small, percentile, and quartile. And then just off to the right is what that function looks like when used. The only note here is function number six, which is the product function. With this list of 100 numbers, product isn't a practical function to use because it multiplies every number against every number in the list. And the result of that calculation is just far too large for Excel to display. So the product function would be used on much smaller data sets. For the remainder of this video, I want to show you how you can switch between the various functions very quickly and test out different behaviors. So I have the list of all the different functions and their names, as well as the behaviors in those behavior codes. I have a small sample data set here with individual sales by region, and then each of these is using an aggregate function to get the sum or average of the sales in that region. And then finally, I'm calculating some sort of result off of all of the data. Going into the edit mode for the aggregate function, the aggregate function is going to use the behavior selected in cell L2, currently it's a nine, the behavior selected in cell L3, currently it's a three, and then it's going to manipulate all of the data in column I, which by the way includes some nested aggregations. So if we were to use a sum function, which is nine, and then told it to ignore nothing, which is a four, we would get an inflated result of 21,000 because if I highlight all of the values we can see here in the quick calculations, it comes to 21,000. But if we wanted to ignore any nested subtotal or aggregate functions, we would change this behavior to a zero, and now we're ignoring nested subtotal and aggregate functions. But what if we were to go in here and hide some rows? Using behavior zero, this doesn't ignore hidden rows. Now, if we change the behavior to option five, which does ignore hidden rows, but option five doesn't ignore other aggregate or subtotal functions. So this ends up being the sum of all of the displayed numbers. If we were to change this to behavior one, this now is only adding up the data because we're ignoring hidden rows and we're ignoring other aggregate functions. But what if we introduce an error into the data, like a pound NA error? Well, that ruins the deal. Well, we could give this a code six, which does ignore those errors, but it doesn't ignore other nested subtotal or aggregate functions. If we give it a code two, it will ignore the error, 
but it still incorporates the hidden rows. Finally, if we choose code three, that ignores the error rows, it ignores the hidden rows, and it ignores other nested aggregate and subtotal functions. Unhiding these rows, we get a recalculation. So for my money, the aggregate function is the way to go, especially if you wish to create a user selectable interface where the user gets to pick the aggregation of their choice, like average, but also to be able to change the behavior of how they deal with hidden, visible, errored, or other aggregations. Aggregate is one of my top 10 Excel functions. I think it's great for building user interactive dashboards. Your only real homework is to go in and get familiar with these code sets and behavior sets. If you're building these aggregate functions and you don't have these little cheat lists at your disposal, Excel will give them to you on demand. So if you start with something like an aggregate function, the first thing it will do is give you a list of all of the function names and their associated code numbers. So if I chose sum, I get a nine, comma. Next, we get a list of all of the behaviors and their codes. Of course, if you're like me, you used code three the vast majority of the time. So you'll end up memorizing that at some point, but otherwise, you can pick it from this list. And the last thing is just to highlight the array. I'll take the entire column I, close parentheses, enter, and there's my result. If I change this back to a sum, number nine, we see those values match. So that's aggregate, the successor to subtotal, the successor to sum, average, max, min, count. Let me know what you think of this in the comments. Don't forget to download this file for all the codes, the examples, and the testing interface. Thank you for watching, and remember at BCTI, the learning never stops.